Okay, let's proceed with the basic concepts of stationarity, its importance, and how to coerce non-stationarity to stationarity. In the context of time series, stationarity refers to the stability of the mean, that is, there's no trend, and stability of the correlation, that is, the correlation structure of the data remains constant over time. The time series plotted here may help in understanding stationarity better. The left-hand plot is stationary. There's no trend, and the time series behaves the same, for example, between the first 50 points and the second 50 points, and so on. On the other hand, the plot on the right looks very different from between time point 1 to 50 and 150 to 200. The means in these time intervals are different, as is the variability, the end of the series being more variable than the beginning. Stationarity means that we can use simple averaging to estimate correlation. If the mean is constant, then you can estimate it by the sample average, x bar, and if the correlation structure is constant, then, for example, we can use all pairs of data that are one time, part, time unit apart, say x1 and x2, x2 and x3, and so on, to estimate the lag1 correlation. This works because the relationship between contiguous values of the series remains the same over time. Similarly, we can use x1, x3, x2, x4, and so on to estimate the lag 2 correlation. The southern oscillation index is reasonably stable. It looks the same in any segment of time, although there might be some slight trend. The scatter plots show correlation in terms of lag. This is called autocorrelation and is the same as the correlation you learned about in regression. The graphic shows that southern oscillation index, which is a surrogate for sea surface temperature, is positively correlated with itself one month apart, but negatively correlated with itself six months apart, as it is hot in the summer and cold in the winter. The global temperature deviation series is an example of a random walk, where the value of the series at time t is the value it was at time t minus 1, plus a completely random movement. Differencing, today minus yesterday, can make this kind of process stationary. The price of chicken series is more like trend stationary, which is stationary behavior around a simple trend. Differencing works here, too. Finally, if there is trend and heteroscedasticity, logging and differencing can help, as in the Johnson & Johnson earnings data set. First, logging positive value data can stabilize the variance. Second, differencing the data will detrend it. Let's look at some exercises.